Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Elementary uh, Arts Integration Bite Size PD. I'm Sherry Jorgensen, the Arts Coordinator for Canyon School District, and with me is Mindy Vandegraaff. Say hi, Mindy. Hello. She is the Visual Arts Specialist at Willow Springs Elementary, and we're going to tag team this for you today. So let me pull up the presentation, and we'll get going. Um, okay, this just a second here. Got to get my the right tab up. Okay, there we go. I think I have it now. All right. Are you good to see that, uh, Christy? Everything good? Okay. So, um, our development today is integrating arts in the elementary core. Um, since we're just going to go ahead and move on and not worry about the question for the chat right now. So I did hit record, note for teacher, yep. And don't forget our professional development norms that we all do in all Canyon's devel uh, professional developments, which is the one biggest thing to remember is just to respect all ideas and take care of your needs, ask questions. Okay, so mute your microphone and turn your camera on if you're comfortable with that, or you can blur the background if you want to or whatever. Um, be sure and type some questions in the chat if you have some. Um, whoops, I don't think I wanted to do that. There we go. I'm going to uh, wait. I'm mm -hmm. figuring this out. I, I want to make this bigger. Can I make that bigger? I have to do it from the tab though, don't I? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, now it's not letting me skip though. How do I advance this? Um, I'm gonna have to make it small again. No, I don't wanna do that. I'll just take us out of the picture here. Okay. Um, today's learning intentions. I will understand the definition of arts integration and learn some ways to integrate the arts into the core curriculum. And you'll know you're successful when you have some concrete ideas to take back to your classroom. And um, we'll give you some specific examples today. Our agenda is we'll, um, we've done some introductions already. Um, we're going to go over some definitions of arts integration and then give you some ideas for arts and integration in several subjects. And then Mindy will be modeling a lesson, a seed lesson on um, visual art. And then we'll have some time at the end for questions. So arts as curriculum is basically arts for art's sake. So we're talking about an art class where you go and you're just teaching about art, um, all the elements, the principles, and you're working on curriculum for the arts. Arts enhanced curriculum would be things like if you're um, – incorporating some other art forms into, into the lesson. If you are playing or drawing a picture or playing some music in the background, you're kind of infusing a little bit of arts, but you're not really teaching anything about the arts. True arts integration is when you're going to combine several standards. This is the Kennedy Center for Arts Integration, their definition. And I'm going to read that to you quickly. Arts integration is an approach to teaching in which students construct and demonstrate understanding through an art form. Students engage in a creative process which, which connects an art form and another subject and meets the evolving objectives in both. So in order to be true arts integration, you need to have met the standards of the arts core, whichever art form that is, as well as the standards of whatever other core or content that you are covering. And that would be your way to get true integration involved. You'll notice in some of these examples coming up that there are many art forms that overlap, especially in the performing arts. So sometimes an activity can serve its purpose in drama and in visual art at the same time or drama and dance will have a lot of similarities, or dance and music has a lot of similarities. These are just some examples of things you can do in a math class. 
uh, in the various art forms. For example, you can shape you can do shape dances where people form big circles, now smaller circles, now straight lines, now wavy lines. Uh, especially for younger kids, this is a lot of fun because it's very engaging. I'm not gonna go through and read each of these to you. I just wanted to point out a couple that might be a little more difficult to really understand. So arranging notes in number order. So you could take a bunch of notes, just make any kind of music note, um, cut them out, you can number them one through 10, but then listen to the pitches. And as kids, um, you can assign numbers to the higher pitches, lower pitches, and then put those all in numerical order. You could even use that to create your own melodies, kind of like they do in the song, The Sound of Music, when they do the so, do, la, fa, mi, do, re, and you put them all together to make a different tune. So then you're meeting standards in both um, num num numeracy as well as in the music. And those are some really fun kinds of things that you can do. In science, for example, um, this is where drama and dance can overlap quite a bit. If you'll notice those first two bullets, there's walk and move like different animals or mimic sounds and movements of various animals. That can be a movement or a dramatic interpretation. So it overlaps. And when we say dance, please don't get confused between dance as movement and dance as choreography. We seldom in the elementary schools teach choreography. We're focused on movement and what you can do with your body to create shapes and do different kinds of things. Um, creating frozen picture tableaus are lots of fun for kids where, or wax museums, some people call it, where they, they get into the shape of portraying something and then they freeze. This Check Out the Vegetable Orchestra is awesome fun. Um, this link, if you go to that, it shows you how to make instruments out of vegetables. And it has some sound examples and things like that, which is a great science um, collaboration there or integration. In social studies, again, you can start to see some overlap here between dance and drama. Performing arts have a lot of similarities. So you can do military moves. You can have uh, conversations between historical figures. You can play the, the old TV game, What's My Line? And for those of you that are a lot younger, let me explain what's my line. So on that particular game show, they would have three contestants who one of them would be the real person and the other two would, would pretend to be that person. So for example, one person could be the real George Washington and the other two. Um, and you have to try to ask the students or the characters or the contestants questions and they would give you answers to try to whittle it down. Who do you think is the real person? It was kind of a fun game show. Um, and it's really great to do that kind of thing with historical figures or any kind of people in general, um, current events and et cetera. Um, moving on to ELA, one of the things that you can do here is to create movement when students hear specific words. The thing that's great about this is as you're talking to kids, you could have your, your clue word or your signal. And whenever they hear that word, there's a particular movement they do. It really gets kids focused and listening because they're listening for that word. Um, so it helps them pay attention, if nothing else. Um, one of the things on here that's suggested is to sing to spell. So you can do five letter words to the tune of you are my sunshine. So for example, if your spelling word or your vocabulary word is party, you would sing P-A-R-T-Y, for you are my sunshine. Um, six letter words work for happy birthday. So B-A-L-L-A-D is ballad. And you can come up with lots of different tunes like that to help kids with spelling or to remember certain phrases or vocabulary words. And those can be lots and lots of fun. Um, this just gives you some general ideas. We, I can help you with resources for all kinds of things for the different core contents. This is just a smattering of the resources that we have av available um, through our district arts inventory and our books, collections, and things like that that teachers are welcome to check out and use. Now I'm gonna turn some time over to Mindy to go over with you 
a sample science lesson incorporating science and visual art. Mindy. Thank you. Well, I'm excited to be able to talk to you today. And Sherry has done a fantastic job explaining um, the reasoning behind arts integration. Just so I can um, introduce myself a little bit, I am a Beverly Taylor Sorensen visual art educator teaching at Willow Springs Elementary and Canyon School District. And as a BTS educator or Beverly Taylor Sorensen educator, my primary job is to integrate visual art into the other core subjects at my school. So I like to work closely with teachers in each grade level. The students that come to my room are doing different projects every time that align with what they're learning in their classroom. I'm gonna share two different lessons that work well with our new SEED curriculum. Um, in order for this to work at my school, we have to have something called teacher collaboration take place. So teacher collaboration is when teachers are working together with a shared vision for the benefit of all students. At my school, it's when I am the art educator working closely with the classroom teachers. And this takes place in three different ways. At my school, um, like all other elementary schools in Canyon School District, arts is taught during brain boosters. And the students come to my classroom during brain booster time for art experiences, which I try to also integrate with the other core subjects. In addition to that, at my school, we're a little bit different than most elementary schools because I have time to collaborate outside of brain boosters with the teachers and then co-teach with them as well. So that's my second type of collaboration that takes place. In addition to that, I also collaborate with non-classroom teachers like our school psychologist, um, our support staff, with our librarian, other booster teachers. It's just a really neat opportunity to try to take visual art and integrate it in lots of different ways. So the one that I'm gonna focus on today will be um, lessons that I've used with collaboration, collaborating outside of Brain Booster Time. Um, in order to have this happen, the classroom teacher and I meet for 10 to 15 minutes prior to their scheduled lesson time to coordinate. So we schedule a time that we're going to be co-teaching together outside of boosters. The lesson is either held in the art room or I will go and teach in the teacher's room and we teach together. So the arts educator, um, I feel is a valuable resource for classroom teachers. And I think the teachers at my school would agree. It's great when we're able to work together on this. The sample, here's a sample of collaboration project process of how this would work. So after the teacher has signed up for their time, I'll meet with them for 10 to 15 minutes as stated before. We'll collaborate on vocabulary. We create a Google Slides presentation. And then we talk about how we want to teach. And when we're co-teaching, we want to have a teaching style that's comfortable for both teachers. We'll then go ahead and teach. I teach the lesson or we'll co-teach the lesson if we're teaching at the same time. And then we follow up with an email just to see how it went, kind of to talk about anything we want to make changes with in the future. It's really, collaboration is key and it's fantastic with arts integration. So the reason why I chose to spotlight two science lessons today is because we are, at our school, we're focusing a lot on the new Utah Science with Engineering Education Standards or the new SEED curriculum. Um, and I feel that visual art is a perfect platform for this. It, um, the students are required in the new SEED programs to develop and use models. And visual arts is fabulous for creating models and um, giving students hands-on ways to, to build or develop their art skills in conjunction with science. It also asks students to construct explanations and design, design solutions. Art pairs really nicely with that and then communicate their learned information. And they communicate verbally. They can also communicate through the projects that they're completing. So the arts are just a fantastic way for students to develop hands-on learning and problem-solving skills to increase communication. And it reaches all types of learners. No matter what learning style the student prefers, it will happen in the art room. So the first lesson that we're going to look at today is one on bird adaptations. This was an integrated art and science lesson that I've done with fourth grade. Thanks. We'll go ahead. So I start off where the teacher and I will choose which standard we want to focus on. The seed standard that we're focusing on today is 4.1.1, which is to construct an ex explanation from evidence that plants and animals have internal and external structures that function to support survival, growth, behavior, and reproduction. We want the students to emphasize how structures support an organism's survival in its environment. So we know that they're talking about adaptations of animals. So we're gonna focus on bird adaptations for this particular lesson. It, as part of the SEED curriculum, students are encouraged to wonder, they're encouraged to explore their world. And so we start with a wonder question. We say to the students, have you ever wondered why all birds don't look the same? Why are some birds different from others? And this is gonna get the kids to start exploring and researching a particular type of bird and discover its adaptations. 
Um, the learning objectives, as I said, are stated in the, in the Google Slides presentation. And, and this, I feel, is just a perfect format when I'm trying to mesh science with art or a different core subject with the arts. I prefer to have a slide presentation. So you can see the learning objectives at the top. We have our standard listed. And then we pose some questions to kids to get them thinking. The presentation goes on to talk about how humans are using their adaptations. And then we look at birds and how bird parts are adaptations as well, helping them with their specific build. So we're going to start with bird beak adaptations. And you can see, obviously, our students would have time to explore those. They're going to make connections in real life. I put some pictures up there, real world connections to what it would look like for a bird. Um, let me keep going. Thank you. We then move on to feet. And we talk about bird feet. And the different purposes, the way they're built, the way they are. Students are able to create a planning sheet that's going to guide their project. So the students, in while they're in the art room with, with both the science teacher, their classroom teacher, and me as the visual art teacher, are going to explore resources. We use iPads for this. We use books for this as well. The students go through and use some of these pages that we've put together, as well as resources online and then in um, classroom resources as well, to research different bird feet and bird beaks. They're going to create their own bird with specific adaptations applicable to their specific bird. They're gonna choose a beak and a feet, and then they have to explain why it's gonna help their bird. And some of this information will help them to, with their model that they're gonna be building next. So this is where the art part is gonna come in. After they have that planning sheet and they understand the purpose of adaptations, they're then going to construct their own model. And our school is really large. We have almost 700 students. And so I need supplies that we can utilize that are inexpensive. And I felt like this was a good lesson to share because I think any teacher would be able to pull some of these things. We're gonna use a paper plate. We want something that's sturdy for this project and you'll see why in just a few minutes. But our students are asked to fold their paper plate and then they're able to design the body of their bird for, to reach all levels of learners. I do have tracers available for students that need it, but for those that are able to just do it on their own, they're welcome to do that. They then use their planning guide, and this is where it's really important, where they're exploring and getting into the hands-on part of the science, where they're going to, after researching the type of feet that they need for their specific bird, for the bill structure, they're going to create that out of cardstock. So you can see how we're building those and attaching those to our bird body. We're also going to fold the wings down. This is an important part for our final project. Thanks. They're going to add details to their bird. So this is where they get to just be creative, use their art skills. They can design it any way that they would like, adding feathers, details, whatever. When they're done, here's the best part. Because we've used a paper plate and because we've put our special adaptations on, the bird will actually fly. And so we get to take our students outside, and they're able to fly their bird across the playground. And it's fun to come back and even discuss it a little bit further to find out why some birds flew better than others. Did the beak have a, did the bill or the beak have a, a role to play in that? We discuss it a little bit more. And then they have a chance to talk to a partner. And the, the teacher and I will go around and observe this and listen. This is a great way to assess that they understand what adaptations are being used for. But they will go around and tell their partner why the adaptations were necessary for their bird survival. They add a few more statements to their planning sheet and then they can submit it all, which is fab fabulous. This is just a great way for them to build a model. The next lesson we're going to look at, here's another example. This is one that was done in second grade that aligns with our seed science curriculum. Um, this is paper animal habitat landscapes. So again, um, I wanted to emphasize that with the new Utah Science with Engineering Education Standards, one of the things that students are encouraged to do as they work through this is to develop and use models. And this is where art aligns perfectly. They're going to be create a physical model that will represent the relationship. And in this essence, we're going to talk about habitats today. The standard that we're working on is strand 2.2, which is living things and their habitats. So living things, plants and animals, including humans, need water, air, and resources from the land to survive and live in habitats that provide these necessities. The physical characteristics of plants and animals reflect the habitat in which they live. So we're going to have a wonder question for our students. Have you ever wondered why certain animals live where they do? Why do certain animals need to live in certain places? We have them think of their neighborhood. What animals are found in their neighborhood? Where do you find certain animals in the world? And again, they're now going to explore. This is part of the seed science curriculum. Using resources, um, books, iPads, different things that they can pull from, they're going to research an animal. 
So here is the Google slide presentation. You can see our learning objective. We're going to talk about habitats. They're going to be creating a habitat landscape that shows their understanding. We talk about different habitat habitats. Um, we talk about that the habitat has four parts. And this is an important concept because this is what they're going to be constructing in their model today when they choose their animal. The habitat has to have food, water, shelter, and space applicable to their chosen animal. Um, you'll notice the rabbit slide at the bottom was actually taken from the seed textbook that is the online textbook that accompanies the new seed program. It's a fantastic resource if you haven't had a chance to look at that, but it pairs really nicely with this as well. So after students have a chance to look at animals and their habitats, they are going to um, research their particular animal. So you can see more of the slides that we did to help the students start thinking about different animals they could select, different habitats, and again, the four parts, the food, shelter, water, and space. There's an animal research page at the bottom of the screen that the students are given. They'll choose an animal, and then they're going to use those resources we talked about, the books and the iPads and the other classroom resources to research their animal's habitat. Um, in addition to this, this particular lesson pairs really nicely with the visual art core because we can talk about landscapes. And I love being able to pull something from visual arts to align specifically with the science project that we're doing. This one, landscapes will have foregrounds, middle grounds, and backgrounds. So we do do a little um, lesson in addition to our habitat. We also talk about landscapes and they'll put that in their final project. Okay, now that the students have completed their research, they've chosen their animal and they've paid attention to the landscape and the three parts that they'll put in their animal's habitat, it's time for them to start building their model. They're going to choose papers that best fit their animal's habitat. They're gonna think about where it's located and what color choice they'll use. They're going to create sky and land on their paper first, and then they're going to make sure that they have those three parts of a landscape, the foreground, middle ground, and background on paper that will go into that paper, into their final piece. They then fold their paper in half in both directions, and they'll cut just the bottom, as you can see the demonstration there, as I put on the slides, where you can see you'll cut just up to the X where it is, and then they're going to overlap the two bottom pieces so that it will stand up, and it will make their habitat become a 3D model. They're going to use paper to draw, cut, and glue their animal. So this is where they're going to want to pull from their animal research page. They need to make it look like their animal, and they're going to want to use those four components. They need to make sure they have shelter, food, land, and space. So they're going to need to include all of those things in their habitat. They'll cut the paper out, put it together. You can see some student examples there. They'll glue it all together. And then they take some time to explain it to the students at their tables. And the sharing part is really critical because it's helping to solidify the four parts of the habitat. There are three parts of a landscape, the research they learned about their animals. It puts it all together and gives them a chance to not only wonder and then explore, but to also report on what they've learned. So using all of this, they now have a freestanding paper model that shows their understanding, which I can use for assessment and the teacher can as well, which is fabulous. Okay, we've seen two lessons that work fantastically well with our new SEED curriculum. And I just wanted to end my part by talking about, just again, the importance of arts integration in the school. I love this handout. This is something that I found from the Art of Education University online, but it talks about some reasoning, again, of why arts integration is so important. Um, students are able to construct meaning by creating representation and models. So this is specifically to visual arts, but I know you can apply that to the other art, so art, art areas as well. They'll have deeper hands-on opportunities for learning. It's great. When they are building something and they're taking ownership in it, it really is solidifying in their head of the things that they're learning. High levels of engagement. Um, students that really are kind of tuned out sometimes come into the art room and they are totally with me. They love what we're doing. It's a really great way. Hands-on learning is fantastic. Increased critical thinking. They develop skills needed for success in the workforce, such as creativity, reasoning, and problem solving. We are trying to get students that are ready to move on past school and go on to a career or to further their education and with that, they're going to need these skills. The arts are fabulous for instilling creativity, reasoning, and problem solving in students. And then it's going to help increase their ability to communicate and observe the world around them. All right, those were two fantastic lessons, some reasons of why we are doing arts integration. And now we want to open it up to questions and answers and see if we can help with any questions that you might have about arts integration. One of the things I wanted to mention is to any of you who may be watching this recording at a later time is I know that many classroom teachers have done um, artwork as part of their lessons. 
the, the piece that's usually missing is the actual art standards that go with it. And that's where the specialist comes into play. I've seen many um, teachers have kids make dioramas or, or things similar to what Mindy showed you in the habitat lesson with the landscape and stuff, but they forget to incorporate and teach the actual art, the visual art piece of that and incorporate that foreground, middle ground and background in terms of the art standards. And that's where um, that specialist can really be helpful. And it's not, it's mostly just because the classroom teacher doesn't have that specialty in the art form. And so anytime you can use your classroom or your elementary art specialist, whether it's dance, music, mm -hmm. visual art, theater, we have some fantastic specialists who can really help you cover those core art standards as you present your core lessons. And having that engagement in both areas is fabulous. All right. Well, we appreciate your time and appreciate you being here. And that is our Bite Size PD. You can look for it on Canyons U in the next day or two as that will be uploaded. Thanks so much.